to the channel and the channel is more about photography than it is about anything else because it's my first love and the whole reason why I made the channel. Yet you have to have a subject to photograph and so I started off with boats and this is part of what I do, boating is part of what I do, doing up old boats and sailing them on uh, dangerous journeys and so for a good part of the year that's what the channel is about <clears throat> yet come winter time the boat goes out of the water and uh, I, it's necessary to continue with the channel and so at that time I'm doing things mainly to do with photography and the history of photography and so um, I hope you enjoy a little bit of photography. Most people need to learn photography anyway because it's something that's more and more part of everybody's life and one day everybody will make videos and use them to promote whatever they do, to document whatever they do and these will need to find a home of course on YouTube. And so I'd just like to say a few words about the way I use the camera because I don't use a camera the way the trend is in YouTube at the moment which I'm very disturbed by. I've had to unsubscribe from many channels because they chop the videos into pieces and the words, they must think that they make mistakes with their voice and then they chop bits out and chop and do them again and keep and, and, and in the end it's just it's diabolical you can't watch it they chopped the silences out and things like that and there was a, a move with the great documentary photographers in the 1930s to not crop not crop anything out of a photograph that whatever appeared in the frame of the photograph that the whole frame you will compose it in the camera and whatever you got in the frame was sacred <laughs> you weren't allowed to to cut any of that out and so i worked that way for many years and i discovered um, trying to make pictures better by cutting things out just doesn't work and the more you cut out of a picture the more that impinges upon your original idea and so always and um, all great photographers have learned that you don't cut anything out of what you take and this is yet to move into the movie making area but I've also discovered that with movies if you cut things out and try to do things over again it loses something and so all of my videos every single piece of what I film is sacred and is used in the final product I don't cut anything out and the only thing I may cut out is I may trim the beginnings and the ends of the videos where there's a clicking noise or it takes me too long to get from the camera to the the place I'm talking from. Yet all of that movement between taking the camera and you know moving the camera and that, I found that it all adds interest to the documentary. And so what the kind of photography I do is documentary photography. And so it's really important to to all the things that you document accidentally they are also important to include in the video for future generations who may watch this video in a hundred years time and be fascinated by the small things which we may not even notice in our videos today and especially in the things that we cut out of what we say the pauses and the speed with which we spoke and all of those things will be of interest to the people of the future and all these videos where they're all chopped up all those videos will just be trashed in the end that the people say oh this is not professional enough this is not good enough to watch they'll all be trashed and I've unsubscribed from many many channels that I enjoyed watching because people have watched this kind of nonsense on YouTube and copied it and introduced it into their own channels and I just had to unsubscribe and 
great channels that I used to enjoy watching, like Wildling Sailing and things like this. I just had to unsubscribe because I'm, I'm not prepared to watch videos that are chopped to pieces like that. In fact, I think it's unhealthy to subject yourself to that kind of cropping. And you never see that kind of cropping actually done on in professional filmmaking. They always crop at the beginning and the end of a scene. They never crop bits and pieces out of the scene and try to make what the actors said better. It's like completely unprofessional. Now, the other thing that I don't do is I don't use ultra-wide angle lenses because on these uh, primitive um, action cameras that have got worse and worse and worse as they got wider and wider, that it's not possible to look at this super-wide view for any length of time. It's a, sort of, it's a special effect. And the trouble is many people are just shooting the whole video in this super wide angle mode and it's just not on and then they do um, a portrait shot which is you know you know I said you know you know what you don't want to be on a wide angle portrait shot your nose looks like really ginormous and what I do is I'm taking a portrait shot like I am now I use a normal to towards a telephoto lens to get a uh, a good effect of the view, a good distance from the speaker, otherwise you feel that they're just shouting down your throat. So these are the considerations that I've introduced into the art of my movie making and my photography. And also I will be including still photographs together with the movie and so where those are introduced I regard those as complete works of art, the actual still photographs. And so they are left on the screen for probably what some people might think is too long. But the idea is that you appreciate, are given enough time to appreciate the finer points of the still photograph. And I hope this encourages people to appreciate still photography, which I feel is, can, is in danger of becoming lost art. And I've gone back to black and white. I don't know whether I'll stick with black and white, for, for, but at the moment I'm really, really enjoying doing black and white. And working with some of the old lenses, this particular lens I got with an Adixa camera that I bought. It's a Isco Gottingen Wester, Westergon lens. And I said I wasn't going to use this lens, so I only shot one photograph of it on the series of videos that I made. But now, because I've finished that project, I'm starting a new project, I have a new camera, I have a new lens. And so this allows me to explore more interesting aspects of what, of what I do. And so it's nice to, um, to be working with this. And the, the photographs I've shot with this particular lens is um, a very satisfying. It's a wonderful lens. Um, it's the same as a Schneider. It was a factory that Schneider set up in Gottingen, which is, Schneider was in München. They set up a factory in Gottingen to uh, build their lenses and put their, so they, 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 you know, they knew what they were doing basically. They're basically Schneider lens. And very nice lenses they are too, Schneider. And so, I'll leave you with that. That's an um, introduction to the channel. And um, please subscribe and comment and have discussions amongst yourselves and um, enjoy the videos which I enjoy making. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.